And we return to our breaking news this hour. As we've reported, police have confirmed to QMI, our wire service, that that head found in a Montreal park on Sunday is that of Chinese student Jun Lin. Senior correspondent for QMI, Brian Daly, joins us now live in Montreal with the details. What do we know, Brian? Yes, we know that uh, this was the 11th homicide of the year. We knew that. What we didn't know was where Mr. Lin's head was located. That was the final piece of the grisly puzzle in this Magniota case. And we had heard uh, in the middle of the holiday weekend on Sunday evening that um, police had roped off a large section of Angrignon Park in the west end of Montreal because someone had found a human head on the shores of Lake Angrignon there at the park. Uh, they'd set up a, a perimeter and we, when we saw that there was a forensic identification truck there, we knew something was up. And uh, so immediately our sources told us that they uh, strongly believed that it was Mr. Lin's head based on some identifying features. Uh, police didn't confirm it officially to everyone else at the time, but our social sources did tell us on Sunday that it was Mr. Lin's head. Uh, the um, body part was later sent in for testing and in fact the DNA match was made. Uh, the family has been informed all through this process. The family, by the way, uh, Mr. Lin's parents, as well as a sister and an uncle, have been in Montreal for uh, some weeks now uh, under uh, protection of the Chinese embassy and uh, other members of the Chinese community. So they've been on top of this situation right from the beginning. And it was important for them that uh, Mr. Lin's head be found so that they could proceed with a burial in China, which they'll now be able to go ahead with. Brian, what do we know about um, what, if any, cooperation police have received from the accused in this case, Luca Magnotto, concerning uh, this last remaining uh, human remains belonging to Jun Lin? Um, do we know whether or not they were tipped off about the location? I know that they were informed by somebody, but that the identity of that person uh, remains a mystery. That's right. So police did confirm uh, on Sunday that the reason why they knew to go to Angrignon Park was somebody told them to go there. We, of course, asked whether that person was Mr. Maniota, and uh, that we simply don't have an answer to that as to whether it was a bystander who called police or whether it was Mr. Maniota himself. As for the issue of whether uh, of how important this head is to the investigation, ultimately, uh, given that uh, there was, uh, there's been a, a presumably a DNA match between um, tissue and other uh, objects, parts found at the uh, scene of the original crime in the apartment in West End Montreal that Mr. Maniota rented and Mr. Lin's body, we can surmise that the, that a strong case has already been made, especially given that uh, there was a video uploaded, as we all know now, to a, a Gore website uh, that police say depicts the murder itself. So a very strong case had already been made against Mr. Maniota, and police had told us at the time that Mr. Maniota pleaded not guilty and requested a jury trial, uh, we were told that ultimately it was the family who really wanted to recover all of uh, Mr. Lin so that they could proceed back to China for, for the burial. Um, Brian, forgive me uh, if my question's redundant. We just had a few things going on in the control room in my ear. Uh, if you've not already addressed it, just where the investigation goes and also what can we expect out of uh, the preliminary hearing, which is scheduled for next March, I believe. Yes, March the 8th preliminary hearing. Mr. Maniota has uh, selected a jury trial. Uh, the preliminary hearing, of course, means that uh, the Crown's evidence, which they're in the course of uh, gathering right now, would be presented. Uh, uh, a week and a half ago, when we spoke to the lead prosecutor, Mr. Louis Boutillier, about whether he'd seen the infamous video, he said he had not, but he planned to see it. And so there are two prosecutors assigned to this monumental case, given that Mr. Maniota had such a heavy web presence, given that there's evidence uh, not only at the apartment, but also in Paris and Germany, a massive amount of digital and other evidence, forensic evidence to go through. So it'll be between now and March that the Crown will have a chance to build its case. Then that information, of course, has to be shared with the defense, which is now a beefed up team, including a uh, Toronto lawyer and uh, March, the preliminary hearing, which we expect to be covered by a publication ban. We also expect a massive presence, not only of domestic media, but of international media. The other part of the investigation that we're not quite sure about right now is the Gore website. Police had hinted quite strongly that they would uh, interview the uh, the man who ran, ran that site because he had for a long time refused to take down the video. Uh, we're not sure where that investigation is right now, but there is the possibility of a charge under the criminal code provision for corrupting morals, which, by the way, is one of the charges that Mr. Maniota himself faces for that video. Thank you for the update on this breaking news, Brian. All right, Krista. Senior QMI correspondent Brian Daly joining us live from our bureau in Montreal. Please stay with us. Much more hard news and straight talk coming up.